Not so again, yeah. Wait, can I get copyrighted for that? The QK65 turned the keyboard world upside down with high-end looks, high-end sound, but with a low-end price point. And QWERTY Keys is looking to do it again with the QK60, a gasket mount wireless entry-level enthusiast keyboard. So we're gonna unbox it, compare it to this thing, and build it 500 different ways because QWERTY Key sent me all their plates. Yay me. Hopefully this video can help you decide on whether or not you'll be joining the group by. It's on October 7th. So today, it's most likely yesterday. I haven't even edited this thing yet. So let's get to it. Inside the beautiful mm. carrying case, you'll find all the usual things, your plates, foams, screwdriver, and hardware. But there are a couple interesting things we do need to check out. Uh, one being the 2.4 gigahertz receiver in case your PC doesn't have Bluetooth capabilities and these moldy little silicone plate fills. These will only be included with the HHKB and wind keyless acrylic tops. More on that later. These little guys will add some design aesthetics to your blockers if you choose to use them. They have blank white, blank black, the letters QK, X and O, and these little butts. Oh yeah, I went with the butts cause I'm nasty. Oh, you thought these were hearts. <laughs> no, 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 no. Little did you know, the designers at QWERTY Keys are freaks. Sub if you like freaks. <laughs> when inspecting the board, it looks like most of the tedious nonsense is already taken care of, like installing the battery and the daughter board. This was a prototype unit that QWERTY Keys sent, so I don't know if they actually built that for me. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna assume not, so hopefully you don't have to either. There's gonna be four different tops available for the group buy. You'll either be able to choose from aluminum tops in black and white or wow. polycarbonate tops in smoky and clear. I went with the smoke because I ain't no basic bit and not because QWERTY keys ran out of the clear protos and they could only afford to give me the black ones. You're gonna have six colors to choose from for your bottom case, all of them being aluminum in black, ice white, burgundy, pink, lavender, and mint, like mine here. Check it out, ooh, yeah. The stainless steel weight will be offered in black, golden, chroma, and ice white. Again, check it out, ooh. One thing that's pretty important to note is that your battery cover seen from the front of the case is gonna match your top case. It's not gonna match your weight. Plate options will pretty much be the same as most. You're gonna have PC, FR4, palm, or aluminum. The aluminum will match the bottom case. I'm pretty sure everybody's prototypes so far have matched. And last but not least, you're gonna have a choice of three different PCBs. Uh, there's gonna be two wireless PCBs. One's gonna have a standard 2U backspace and the other is going to be a wireless split backspace. True HHKB fashion. And your third PCB is gonna be a standard hot swap PCB which will be able to do both along with split spacebar capabilities. The cheapest configuration is gonna start at $143 and will go all the way up to $158. The only one that comes close to this, I think is the Keychron Q4. I'm gonna say that one's like 160 bucks or something like that. I mean, come on, don't buy that, buy this. And if you do end up picking up one of these, there are a couple things we need to go over. One being the proprietary software, instead of using Via or Vial, uh, like the QK65, they have their own software due to the wireless PCB. It's called the QK Configurator. QK, yeah, it's the QK Configurator. <laughs> QK config. Not much to say about this other than it's via. One simple tip, do not plug in your dongle before getting into the dongle pairing mode. I did this and it would no longer pair. Um, you have to do that first. In dongle mode, I was able to get all the way to my kitchen, which is approximately, say 50 feet, 40 feet. And it was still working. It wasn't until after I got into the kitchen because one has stopped working, but I also think that is because my kitchen 
ended up blocking a lot of that signal. Bluetooth capabilities and 2.4 gigahertz dongle mode, two thumbs up. And I know everyone's gonna ask about the comparison between this and the QK65, but in order to get to that, we're gonna have to go through the sound tests first in order for you to get a better feel of the differences. I've compiled a plenty of sound tests, all the different plates with no foam, so you can get a feel of what that sounds like as a bass. And then I've built the aluminum plate with all the different foams in every configuration possible. That way you can get a feel of what those parts will modify to the sound profile. Sound tests through the internet are not really that accurate, but I have some graphs to prove what they're gonna sound like. Disclaimer, I'm not a sound engineer and I'm definitely not critical. I do have some knowledge about sound graphs because I like to dab in the audiophile world once in a while, you know? I'm subscribed to Josh Valor and fucking Z reviews in his weird garage. Measuring keyboard sound signatures are somewhat difficult, mainly because there isn't a standard to measure keyboard sounds, obviously. If you have not seen that video by Critical at the Mecha Store channel, you have to check it out. He breaks this down to a T. Let's go ahead and check him out and I'll briefly explain what I found in my testing. So this orange line is represented by the QK65 and the blue line is representative of the QK60. Um, so here you can see there's a boost in the two to three K regions for the QK65. And this correlates with that PE foam marbly sound. And then as you can see here, there's also a boost in the low end that gives it that deeper sound. Meanwhile, it's the opposite for the QK60 with the marbly region and the lighter frequency region around the 10K frequencies pretty much in the same decibel level and creating more of a brighter marbly sound. Now, I know you really can't just pick different areas of the graph because it needs to be interpreted as a whole. That's a whole different video. Again, critical, mega store watch it. But this is pretty much the gist of what we're trying to look at here. The QK60 is definitely brighter versus the deeper tones and loudness of the QK65. And the last comparison is the typing feel. The QK65 R1 was stiff, like super stiff to me, to the point where I had to half plate mod it and I had my wife cut a bunch of whole shit off of it just to give it more flex. I heard the R2 PCBs were better um, and they were a lot more flexy, but I didn't get my hands on one of those, so I can't speak for those. Maybe they did. The QK60, on the other hand, does have flex. You can achieve a lot of bounce with the palm and PC plates. It's not even funny. Like, look here at the palm plate without case foam. I also omitted the gasket socks on the uh, middle leaves and even just slightly tapping on it. You can see the movement. This thing is super flexy without those bottom foams. All in all, this thing is the best sub $200 board hands down. The aesthetic and the feature set is high end without the high end price, just like the QK65 and QWERTY keys is just killing it again. I cannot wait to see what they're gonna come out with next. Probably a QK100, maybe? If any of the info was helpful, let me know in the comments. Maybe hit the sub button. I don't know. I'll have uh, the link to the Discord and all the sale info. Hopefully I get this out before the group buy. If it's out after, I'll also have that linked in the description below. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.